<laughs> no one had seen Carl's wife for almost a week. Many guessed that she'd gone on vacation or something. After two weeks, most figured that she'd been visiting a sick relative. Three weeks, and no one talked about it anymore. A month missing, and no one would stop talking about it. So goes the gossip of small towns, I guess. Two months in, everyone seemed to believe she'd left her husband of over a decade. After four months, everyone just stopped talking about it, save for when Carl's little blue jeep wasn't parked in his driveway. Even then, people were quiet. No one disliked Carl, exactly, but the situation seemed to be something we mere neighbors shouldn't chat about. Carl was a good-hearted, gray-haired guy who would always smile and nod if he drove by. He and his wife Janice usually kept to themselves, which wasn't odd for an older couple. Whenever I'd see his wife out and about, rare in and of itself, we would chat about idle things. Things that didn't matter much in the end. Why she painted her nails purple this week. How my dog was liking his raw diet. Normal things like that. She was kind, with honey blonde hair and short, clean nails. Carl was a man who didn't care for his front lawn. It was a lumpy hill with sparse grass. His wife, however, made a lovely, though tiny, flower bed for her tulips. The mailbox was surrounded by a rainbow of little blossoms that burst open overnight. Pruning, watering, feeding her flowers. It was the only time I'd see her outside. It was, she had once said, why she wore her solitaire ring around her neck. If I lost this old thing, why, I'd lose my head. That old thing, with its pretty blue stone and simple silver setting, were a constant around her neck. I never saw her without it. While Janice adored her tulips, the most outdoorsy Carl seemed to get was when he'd step out on his front lawn and dump a huge scoop of bird seed in front of the tree in their front yard. In and out in under a minute. He did this every day, even if it rained. Even if it snowed. Even after his wife stopped tending the flowers. Even after she'd been gone for months. Even after the neighborhood gossips got to talking. I'd lived right across from Carl and his wife. His bird seed and her tulips were a common thing like when I'd take their mail or newspaper to the mailbox, or drag trash bags all the way to the curb. It was neighborly to do, and I'd get thanked now and then. Carl was pretty grateful for my help after his wife was gone, especially when he'd bring those burlap bags of birdseed into the house. It used to take both he and his wife to do it, Petite Janice wasn't the best at helping Carl lug those big bags into their house. That's how the three of us started talking, really. I'd heft some big bags of birdseed for them. The three of us got along well. His wife, those rare times she could, would drop off a casserole or something on my stoop. I'd bring back the dishes, washed and cleaned, with their mail or their trash. It was our normal, and I never was one to turn down a good meal. Even after Janice went missing, I'd still find a casserole on the stoop. Carl was a damn fine cook, it seemed. Everything went completely to shit when my dachshund slipped his collar on our nightly walk. Stumpy-legged little lump that he was, he was still growing, and walks didn't always burn off that energy of his. He was off like a rocket down the street, scaring the shit out of birds as he went. Tartuffe? Here! Nope. 
He torn down the road, ears back, tongue lolling out like a hunk of boiled ham. I only caught up to him when he started rooting around in Carl's yard. He had to have startled a half dozen crows, who cawed and flapped into the high branches furiously. They'd get their food when I got my dog. Tartuffe! The little sausage ignored me, tail going, eating away at the seeds Carl had tossed out. He was crunching away at what, I assumed, was a peanut. Little shit wasn't going to come when called, so up the hill I climbed, careful of the tulips, and hoisted him up by the scruff. He didn't yelp. He wasn't a wimp. Picking him up only made him crunch harder on the peanut. Tucking him into one arm, I pried the strangely soft peanut out of his little jaws. I was ready to toss it back into the pile of seeds when I stopped. What I had in my fingers was soft, with something hard in the middle. Whatever I pulled from my dog's mouth, it wasn't a peanut. It felt kind of meaty, kind of like rubber, too. Holding it up in the fading sun, still in Carl's yard, crows overhead. I realized what my dog had had. My eyes widened at the sight of a small, shriveled fingertip. I bolted across the street, wiener dog in one hand, finger in the other. The police were on my doorstep in under ten minutes. We talked for a bit, with Tartuffe gnawing on a rawhide by my foot. Soon enough, Carl's little blue jeep rolled up the street. He was in cuffs after a few minutes. He'd had a jumbo bag of bird seed in his back seat. I was called in for more questioning, of course, but I couldn't tell the police anything more than what I had seen the day I called them. No one saw his wife for months, and everyone assumed that she'd left him, but never in a hundred years did anyone think that this would happen. I watched from my basement window, Tartuffe in my lap, as the police tape went up. I kept out of sight. There were so many plastic bags of evidence pulled from that house. I think I saw a cleaver. I know I saw a huge-ass meat grinder. A gurney, with a misshapen body bag on top, was carted out the front door. The police dug up the flower bed, the whole yard, the backyard, all of it. The neighborhood was abuzz for weeks after. All about the man they thought they knew. About what he was hiding in his basement, and in his bird seed. According to the police report that had been released some time later, Carl had been abducting older women from around the area for God knows how long. Mostly petite women with blonde hair. He'd been using the bird seed and meat grinder to get rid of the parts he didn't want to keep. He used the empty burlap sacks to transport the bodies into his home. Bones. Guts. And the like. He kept the calves and the feet from the knees down. He kept all their hair in a storage bin under his bed. There was a freezer full of feet, bone meal, and crushed up teeth. There were four women inside that house, but none of them were Janice. They had all been petite older blondes. They had all had their lower legs cut off and all their blonde hair shaved, and they were ground up like fucking meat in a back-alley butcher shop. They were well-loved by their community, but not a one of them was Janice. This all happened a few months back, when I could still take Tartuffe for walks without his stupid sweater. Even so, it took me a few days to get myself together and write this down. This crap didn't end with Carl's arrest and his M.I.A. wife. Oh, no. It ended in my kitchen last Tuesday night. 
You know how it goes sometimes. Not wanting to cook, not wanting to go out, and not having the cash to order in. It was just one of those nights, and I was just looking for dinner. Frozen pizza and chicken tenders were pushed aside when I saw a square tin covered in foil. Out came a beautiful lasagna from who knows when. As much as the idea of eating something Carl had made made me sick, hunger won out. I don't like wasting perfectly good food. Damn my stomach. Damn Carl. That lasagna was fantastic for the first few bites. Layers of ground meat, ricotta, tomatoes, and pasta, piping hot and piled high. Tartuffe was munching away at his dinner, and I sat, fork in hand, for mine. Two forkfuls in, and one of my molars was lit with ugly pain. My tongue confirmed that, yes, my tooth was chipped. I spat into my hand, my chair sliding back as I stood. I... I... I swear to God on high, I thought it was a pull tap that might have fallen into the damn dish. I'd give my left arm for it to have been that. Rinsing it under the sink, I couldn't see it well at first. A second or so after, the links snapped into place, and I dropped that thing in the sink. Bent over, my vomit was thick with tomatoes and bile. I'll never touch a goddamn lasagna again. What I'd spit into my palm, sparkling with tomato sauce caked under the gem, sat a ring. A familiar, solitaire ring with a pretty blue stone and simple silver setting. Ground up and cooked into a steaming hot dinner, I found what was left of Janice.